Hey what is up guys, welcome back to the channel and welcome back to Gran Turismo 7. It is that time of the week once again where the weekly challenge races get updated and this time around we have a bunch of new races in store. Now just a quick apology before we begin, if you do hear a bunch of wind in the background and stuff, I think we have a storm rolling in at the minute and it's uh, yeah just causing an absolute racket so I do apologise in advance um, if you can hear all of that going off in the background but let's get straight to it. So we're going to go ahead and do a quick overview first of the five events that we have on offer. A little bit like last week, the majority of these are on the shorter side, um, apart from maybe the last one which does kind of bulk it up. In terms of the uh, prizes that are on offer, it is just purely credits this week, uh, which for me was a rather decent thing. You're going to be earning way over a million uh, for all five of these events, obviously with the bonuses on top. So you've got 100,000 for one event, 150k for three events, and then for all five five events being completed uh, you're going to hit half a mil in credits and obviously the typical race payouts on top of that so the first event as you can see is the sunday cup at broad beam raceway i believe this is one of the intro events uh, second up we have the european sunday cup 500 at brands hatch on the gp layout then we move over to barcelona catalonia with the rallycross track for the world touring car 600 then on to a special event this time for the honda civic type r e k now you can uh, well basically be eligible to use a touring car or the road going versions but the ai will be using the touring version um, from what i noticed on my run through and then we have the wtc 800 at the uh, Nürburgring on the endurance layout so a rather decent selection of events some relatively short some a little bit longer so let's have a look at event number one this is obviously the Sunday Cup uh, at Brobeen. Um, in terms of this event, this is, again, one of the intro events. It's very, very quick. You can get this done in literally a matter of seconds. And you're going to be getting paid 100 k um, on top just for completing this one event. So no real complaints there. So in terms of this, I do like to use cars that I've either not used for a while or maybe I've never run them at all. And this was the case here for the 2000 GT from 1967, the classic Toyota. Now, in terms of the event itself, it's very, very easy. I'm running all of these on the hardest difficulty i was able to get past the ai no problem at all they are all in sort of the i guess introductory cars of G the gt7 world so don't expect anything fast don't expect the ai to be really any good in terms of defending or anything like that again this is just one of the intro events to the game in terms of your single player and we are obviously running it this time around for 100,000 credits again if you want you can use something ridiculously quick and have this done no problem it's pretty much an open event i believe there's no set pp limit so there we go we had that one done and dusted in a matter of seconds giving us event stamp number one and 7,500 credits with the clean race bonus so not great in terms of the payout but we are getting paid essentially 100k for around about 90 seconds of our time so there we go that is event number one done and dusted with now in terms of the i guess general tips and tricks for this one you shouldn't necessarily need them i'm pretty sure most of us have done this event as we you know first i guess stepped into work the world of gran turismo 7 there's nothing on offer now that kind of wasn't there apart from a few different additional cars added to the roster uh, but again most of the cars very you know sort of basic you know right back to the origins of gt7 in terms of the sort of cars that you're going to see so they're not difficult you won't have to worry about tires fuel or anything like that just pick something absolutely flat uh, fast and flat out if you want to just blast away the uh, competition let's move on next to event number two this is a european sunday cup 500 this takes place on the brands hatch grand prix layout so the full layout of this track again aimed at european cars uh, around a 500 pp limit but i'd say a lot of them just feel massively under that limit so it's a very fair one once again it's not set in stone it's rather quite open i went and used the ktm expo here which i've just not tried at all at least this one i thought i had driven it before but allegedly not so i don't know if i do have a duplicate somewhere as well um, and i've just kind of won this on a reward ticket at some point during its life cycle again like i said a lot of the ai seem very underpowered in comparison to that 500 limit i think the only car that may give you a few issues is the a45 amg which just seems to gap the rest of the field by quite a margin the rest of them will just kind of bunch up or you know just kind of sit on the racing line and not bother really to make any moves or really make much trouble for you um, as a player as you can see 
by the time I got to the end of lap one, my uh, KTM was able to just get it down the inside, get that moved on and finish up the final lap. And that is literally it. Again, no tyre fuel or anything to worry about. I believe the PP limit isn't set in stone. So if you do want to kind of take advantage of that and abuse the system and get it done even quicker, feel free. Now, in terms of the clean race bonus on this one, I took away 15,000 credits for a couple of minutes on my time. Once again, another very, very short event to get us beginning with. Usually at this point, it does get a little bit more difficult, but I'd honestly say this time around, we're going for once again, another short, easy event after this. So again, like I said, if you want want to you can really abuse the performance point limit you don't have to worry about that too much it's not necessarily set in stone all of the ai even on the most turned up difficulty are very easy apart from that amg which you know if you do allow it and you don't kind of pick something fast enough you may only be catching towards the latter half of this race meaning that you are at risk of obviously not taking away p1 Let's move on to event number three now for a quick overview of this one. This is a WTC 600, basically the road going event that took place at the rallycross layout of Barcelona de Catalunya. I really do enjoy this event. In terms of this one, it does have the 600 PP limit in place, so you cannot abuse it. I think that's where most people are probably going to have the issue with it. Now, in terms of what I used for this event, I went for the Mini Clubman VGT, threw on some dirt tyres, and that was enough to quite easily win this, even on those higher difficulties. This is one of the rare occasions in GT7 where you will actually have a standing start for the event. Obviously, typical rallycross style, you'll start on sort of a runoff area and then get onto the main track itself. So the layout does kind of change uh, from sort of the second time around onwards. Again, in terms of the event, I really do enjoy this event. Again, the main issue you're going to have is perhaps maybe up front the Lancer and the uh, Impreza could possibly give you a hard time if you are not picking a car that's really i guess too suited to off-road conditions or that 600 pp limit i do recommend definitely go for something possibly four wheel drive something with plenty of grip if you do want to copy the cars out in front um, i believe one is the lancer evolution Mackinac edition and obviously the wrx is one of the uh, newer um, impreza models that is in the game anything like that should realistically work as long as you you know i guess building it to a higher standard or you can just cheese it and turn AI down. But I did at least want a bit of competition. After that, you should realistically find your groove. And once you really are in that groove and you start breaking away, there is a high chance that the AI will probably never bother you again. That is going to give us stamp number three and our second reward of the week. So we took away 45,000 credits for that uh, event. Now, I believe we didn't get the clean race bonus. So on top, add 50% on that one. And that is also going to give us our second reward of the week, which is 150 thousand credits so overall not too bad that is three of the five events done with but i'll just give you a few more pointers in terms of this event so the 600 pp limit for this one is set in stone so it isn't something that you can take advantage of like the first two events so you will have to be building a car catered towards that However, dirt tyres do drop the performance point rating of a car massively, meaning that even if a car is, let's say, sat around about 650, there's a high chance that if you do like that car, you know it's got plenty of power, if you can get the dirt tyres on that vehicle, there's a chance that it's just going to go way under that 600 limit and you should have plenty of power, a decent drivetrain to drag you through. And in all honesty, I don't see too many people having problems once they've kind of figured out, you know, a decent car to tackle this task. Fully recommend four-wheel drive would definitely help you out. Wouldn't recommend it, you know, rear-wheel drive or even front-wheel drive. There was a couple of Civics that seemed to struggle um, in the latter stages of that event. So now we have a special event once again. And it is going to be a typical sort of one mate competition race. This time, though, we have something a little different. We've had the Radicals. This is the time for the Civic Type REK model. Now, it does say one mate, but there is some leniency to this. So you can run any version of the EK generation of Civic Type R, obviously the OG, the original. Um, the majority of the AI, I think most of them, or if not all of them, will run the Civic Touring Car, which is sort of the more race going version and that's exactly what I went for I have one pretty much fully built up here but running on sports softs that was still plenty enough to absolutely run away from the rest of the AI I believe the majority of the AI will be running the base version with no mods so it will be exactly how it is when you purchase it that's what I'm assuming the AI is in 
terms of the way they performed and stuff. I don't think any of them actually ran the road version. I'm pretty sure that it's going to be set in stone. And I did get massive Gran Turismo 2 vibes uh, from this event. I really did enjoy my time with this. And I hope that Polyphony start looking into maybe having one mate championships in the brand central. You know, a little bit like those um, older Gran Turismo games where you could find these special events and one mates kind of hidden away in there. Um, I really don't like the fact that they kind of put them in for a week and then just take them out forever. For me, add them to the roster put them in for that manufacturer um, in the dealership especially since all of these either seem to be one makes with either Porsches Radicals or obviously now the Honda Civics in terms of the event though it was very very easy obviously I think I was definitely over the performance limit um, definitely able to take advantage of that and just kind of pull away so 121,500 credits for that one for five laps at Watkins Glen uh, full course is really nothing to scoff at that was a decent paying event for around about 10 minutes of my time so since this is a special event i'm going to give you a few pointers now like i said the ai seems to run the touring car and that's what i recommend going for it's just a much more i guess track focused it's much more balanced than putting a crazy amount of power through one of the road versions now like i said i ran sports softs and the car was absolutely fine but if you want to i believe you can run race tires as well so it's up to you if you kind of want to go down the route of a massively overpowered road going version you're perhaps going to get a bit of downside on the handling so therefore i would fully recommend going for the touring car getting that balance getting it you know at full performance and you should be able to absolutely breeze this one really good event though props to polyphony for the gt2 vibes now let's move on to the final event of the week the wtc 800 this time at the nurburgring endurance layout one of the i guess later layouts added to the game and obviously one of the newer layouts um, to the nurburgring obviously alongside the sprint this one combines the Nordschleife and the sprint layouts itself making the endurance layout rather than the 24 hour layout so in terms of the car i used here i went for the 787b just because it's amazing on fuel and i absolutely love the sound of this thing and this is going to allow me to not actually pit i fully recommend running around about fuel mix three to four this will last you all the way to the end i'm running a set of racing mediums here and just because this car is so kind on its tire life and its fuel usage it was no problem at all i did run into a bit of a problem early on though by getting binned by a ferrari and having to make up all my positions once again the only thing i would say that makes this event relatively difficult compared to a lot of other wtc 800 events is just mainly because of how tight the nordschleife itself actually is it's all about picking those opportunities to pass the ai just seems to be driving in the middle of the road the majority of the time and you've just got to be extremely careful you know one wrong move there on the Nordschleife it's going to cost you a ton of time however there is a downside to the AI even if you're just following them around there's a chance you're going to make a ton of positions each lap because the AI just seems to pit constantly as you can see around about the midpoint of lap two I took the lead and I never looked back meaning that by the end of this after not pitting and not putting new tires on I was able to pull out over a minute gap and get my final stamp of the week in terms of the payout it's relatively low for around about 20 minutes of an event time so 200k however it is made a little bit better by the fact that we took away a 500k bonus on top so definitely worth your time this week if you're just looking to pursue those credits so again for me i would definitely use a car that is good on fuel consumption and good on tire life also keep an eye on the weather radar at this event because i believe there is the chance for it to rain i think the first ever time i ran this was in an hour probably the audi dtm and i'm pretty sure i did get rain so just keep your eye out for that if you do choose a car that's good on obviously tires and fuel and it doesn't rain then you're pretty much in for a golden time and you won't have to pit or worry about any of the ai in the latter stages of the event so we're just going to add all of the credits this week in terms of the rewards there's nothing to see in terms of you know the roulette wheel appealing uh, appearing or anything like that it's just pure credits this time around so really not too shabby for around about an hour's work so there we go that is the events for this week i'm actually going to be able to get these out on time like last week where i kind of missed it and then had to bring it out on the saturday um so yeah thanks so much for watching have a fantastic christmas if i don't see you before i'll see you later take care guys peace